Hey, I'm Kendall Schmidt and you are watching Pop Crush. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I have a mistake. I mean, sometimes how about, how about meeting someone uh, and like dating them and then it doesn't work out and you end up moving somewhere and then you meet somebody else. Like that's, those are all things I consider happy mistakes. I had an idea like for a music video where I thought like a good way to convey it would be like um, a guy quits his job and he's sad about it but then realizes he actually gets to spend time with his family so sort of happy mistake. That's kind of how I always looked at it. So anything along those lines, happy mistake. That song I think is a situational kind of song. I, I wrote it in order to ins to inspire the feelings that hopefully have been conveyed through the lyrics and um, it's something that I think about a lot and so I figured it was an appropriate song to write and uh, I wanted like to have a universal message song and not have all the songs just be about love songs and so I figured it was a good way to start the album. Plus, uh, musically, what's contained in the song is what the, is contained in the whole album, you know what I mean? So it's like it has a, a nice amount of guitar, so there's a lot of guitar in the album, and there's a lot of synth, so it has a lot of synth in the album. So I wanted something that would, if you heard that song, you could expect the rest of it to sound like something along those lines. Oh yeah, the Nico and Vince song. Am I wrong? Can I be something for real? I mean, that whole song is basically just about like, am I wrong for feeling like I'm gonna take over the world and like, you know, be awesome? I think it's really inspiring. I actually was really excited to hear that on the radio because like that kind of stuff doesn't play on the radio very often. It seems like you have to be writing about like, you know, a dirty night or like something weird or drinking or whatever to get on the radio. So hearing something like that was like, all right, like cool, inspiration. So the first line of that song is um, even at the top of a mountain, there's another hill to climb. So I always thought that was kind of cool because um, you know, you accomplish something really cool. I mean, even in my life, I can equate it to like Big Time Rush, like we accomplished so much together, but like you would think that like, oh, you've done so much, like aren't you going to take a break? Like no, I have so many like personal dreams that I want to make happen in my life. And so, um, you know, you reach a peak and you think you've made it and then you're like, oh my God, I still have a whole nother thing to climb and, and to where I want to go. So that one always meant a lot. And then where actual happy mistakes comes from is let's remember the happy mistakes we might have forgot along the way. So that's that sort of don't forget what has led you to where you are because if you're able to reflect then that means that something like that has happened and, and you're in a better place now if you're able to reflect on it. So the Happy Mistakes Tour is happening uh, August 30th is the first date in Atlanta and um, I guess the first thing is they can expect the new music. Um, I wanted to play as many songs as possible from the new album, but I also didn't want it to just be the new album, so I have some of the older songs in there. Uh, funny enough though, like, the only things that have been officially released is the new album, so like, the older songs are kind of just an homage to people who liked Heffron Drive when it first started. Because if you're coming into the band after hearing Parallel and you didn't know anything about the history of it, then you wouldn't even know that there was an EP of songs like in 2008. So. Um, I want to play those, obviously, because there's fans that really love them, but uh, the new music, I'm, I'm, for as small as like the clubs are, I'm bringing a whole lighting rig and it's going to be really cool, and uh, it's probably going to be more stuff than has ever been put into those venues. Uh, I'm like just going all out with it, and plus it's like up to me to plan it so I can get whatever equipment I want to and, and kind of have it look whatever way I want to, so I'm actually going for like perfect sound. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm just like on this hunt for like the equipment and the playing style and everything, I'm trying to make the show just sound epic. We give each other a hug every time, say like, you know, really cool to be here, or whatever, something like that. Um, we had an abundance of them in BTR, but I haven't been able, I don't want to like force them, I want them to just happen naturally with Heffron Drive, so I'm waiting until something pops up that seems like it needs to be done every single time. Most of the time it's usually something just ridiculous, absolutely absurd. It has nothing to do with warming up. There's a lot of celebrity crushes though, you know, they're all, there's a lot of beautiful girls in that acting world uh, and music world. I'm trying to think of, uh, Jennifer Lawrence is very pretty um, and she's extremely talented so that's obviously like a big attractive thing to some, someone who's really good at what they do. 
I think Haley from Paramore is really cute. I also love kind of punk rock kind of style too, so that's cool. I'm a man of the world. I, I think all girls are cute, so it just depends. And I did get to meet Avril Lavigne one time and I picked her up. Just grabbed her and picked her up. Swung her around a little bit. But she's really tiny, right? But she's really it was tiny. easy to do, yeah. It was like, you know, just like that, legs flailing. Well, it'd be easy to be on the new girl because Schmitty. So I would just go and take over the position uh, of him. I don't know, the guy who plays Schmitty. I never actually watch the show. I just get called that all the time because of it. Um, I'd like to be animated on Family Guy. I think that'd be really cool. To be animated at all, we got to do that a couple times in the past. That was really cool. Oh, The Walking Dead. Yeah, I gotta be on that. I don't know how much longer it's gonna go. It seems like it's the most popular show on television, so hopefully I get a shot. I mean, of course, missing the guys is uh, an everyday thing, like we, uh, traveling, that's a big, traveling with them is really fun because there's always someone to go do something with. Um, and with Heffron Drive, it's just the two of us as far as like most, most of the time traveling. So uh, if one of us is tired, then you're by yourself doing something. So um, that was a lot of fun. Filming was a lot of fun, even though it was more hours than I actually expected it to be. I was thinking that because it was a, a 20, really it's like 22 minutes because of commercials that it wouldn't be as crazy as it was and then it turns out like the first week of filming it was like 18 hour days every day it was insane and I never even realized that so I missed the camaraderie of being on set all the, the family kind of tie of everyone like all the crew supported us as if we were their kids the, the people at Paramount at my local coffee shop uh, the guy Aaron at the coffee shop I just used to talk to him every day so like I missed like those things little things Uh, I don't know what's a mess. I suppose I don't really I haven't really seen many. Oh, all the like Kogan is real. That stuff came's like when they combine our names, they actually think it's legitimate. And sometimes I'll play into it and like I'll post a photo of Logan. I get to be like Kogan, just to kind of like fuel the fire. But I genuinely think that some people think that like when they do those relationship things in bands that it's actually a legitimate thing.